In this video we start off by reviewing the basic equation and then show how this can be applied to a range of more complex equations. Now when we have the basic equation we solve this in the following way. Now here we can see how we have a plus 3 in the equation. So if I take 3 from both sides of the equation then the plus 3 here will cancel off. So if I take 3 from both sides, on the left I'm left with a, just a 5x, but on the right I have an 11, take 3 equals 8. So 5 lots of x equals 8, and then to find x I divide by the coefficient of x which is 5, so I divide by 5, so x equals 8 divided by 5, which is 8 over 5. And in this video I will leave my answers as fractions. So any equation, however complex, can in the end become one of these simple equations. So if I look at the second one, I have a bracket. Now the general rule is to expand the bracket first. So if I times by 3, 3 times 2x equals 6x. Remember, the number before the bracket just means multiply the terms in the bracket by that number. 3 times 2x is 6x, 3 times 5 is 15. And this just equals the 13. So we're now back to the basic equation. There's the plus 15 here, so if I take away 15 from both sides, then the plus 15 will cancel off. So 6x will equal 13, take 15, which is minus 2. Then to find x, I divide by the 6, which is the coefficient of x. So x just equals minus 2 over 6 which cancels down to minus one third. In the next part, we start to review how to solve equations with fractions. Now here we have 5x plus 3 all over 2 equals 11. Now when we have an expression over or divide by a number, then to cancel off the, in this case, over 2, is, is to multiply both sides of the equation by the 2. Now if I times by 2, the over 2 will cancel off. So I'm left with 5x plus 3. However, because I've times by 2, the right hand side becomes 22. And we're now back to the main basic equation type. There's a plus 3 here, so I subtract the 3 from both sides. The plus 3 cancels off, so 5x will equal 22, take 3, which is 19. And again at the end, I divide by the coefficient of x, which is 5, so divide by 5, x will equal 19 over 5. So we've solved an equation with just one fraction in. However, in the second example, there is more than one fraction. Now, my method is as follows. Now, I start by writing each term as a fraction. Now, the 3 can be written as 3 over 1, because 3 divided by 1 is still 3. I then try to write each of the fractions over the same number. Now 5, 2 and 1 all go into 10. So I can write each of the fractions over 10. Now then, to get from 5 to 10 I've times by 2. So I must therefore times the top by 2 as well. So 2 times 3x is 6x 2 times 1 is 2. The 
2 has been times by 5, so times the top by 5, x times 5 is 5x. And the third fraction, the 1 has been times by 10, so 3 times 10 is 30. Now then, now they're all over the same number, I can basically cancel off by times in by 10. So the equation becomes 6x plus 2 plus 5x is equal to 30. So I've just cancelled off all the 10s. Now the first step now is to simplify 6x plus 5x equals 11x plus the 2 equals 30. And we're now back to the basic equation. There's a plus 2 there, so I must take away 2 from both sides. 11x equals 28. And then to finish off, x will equal 28 over 11. So again, when we have multiple fractions, in my view, the best method is to write all the fractions over the same number, which is the lowest common multiple, in this case of 5, 2 and 1, which was 10. Cancel off and then solve as normal. The next part looks at another method which can be used when there's only two fractions. And this is called cross multiplying. Though it is in the end the same method really. Now I've got two fractions over 2 over 4. Now I like to write the top of the fractions in this case with brackets. And then what the cross multiplying method says is that I times the right hand side by the 2 and the left hand side by the 4. And so what the equation becomes is, is 4 lots of 5x plus 3 is equal to 2 lots of 7x plus 1. So I've cross multiplied. This is then an equation with brackets. So step 1 is to times out the bracket. So 4 times 5x is 20x, and 4 times 3 is 12. 2 times 7x is 14x, 2 times 1 is 2. So we're now almost down to the basic equation, but I've got x terms on both sides. So I can start by looking at this 14x, and I can take 14x from both sides. That will cancel off, but 20x Take 14x is 6x, plus 12 equals the 2. And then I've got a plus 12, so I take away 12. So 6x equals 2 take 12 is minus 10. And then finish by dividing by the 6. So x equals minus 10 over 6, which cancels to minus 5 over 3. So we can use this method when there are two fractions. We can therefore apply this method to more complex looking equations. Now then, again, I've got two terms on the top, so I'm going to put a bracket around it. I will do the same with the bottom of the fraction as well. And with this method I've got two fractions, so I can times up by the 5x plus 2, and up by the 5, that's the cross multiplying method. So I get 5 lots of that bracket is equal to x times by this bracket. I've got brackets, so step 1 is to expand. 5 times x squared is 5x squared. 5 times 3 is 15 x times 5x is 5x squared, x times 2 is 2x. Now, we then stop and look, because we can see how on both sides there's a 5x squared. So therefore, if I were to subtract 5x squared, then these terms would cancel off. And I'm left with 15 equals 2x. I will then rewrite this by swapping the equation around to get 2x equals to 15, and then divide 
by the 2, so x equals 15 over 2. This final part of the video looks at a more complex looking equation, but we're going to apply the techniques met so far in this video. Now step one, put brackets around the terms like so. Now then, and write the one as one over one. And I am now going to make all the fractions have the same denominator by using the following method. Now, look at fraction 1. x over x plus 2. I'm going to put an x plus 3 down there as well. But if I put an x plus 3 at the bottom, I must put an x plus 3 at the top. So I'll force the x plus 3 into the fraction. I then look at the second fraction, 5. It's got an x plus 3 already, so I'm going to force the x plus 2 in. But what to do to the bottom, I must do to the top. These two fractions now share the same denominator. I then do the same with the 1 over 1, so 1 over 1, x plus 2, x plus 3. What I do to the bottom, I must do to the top. Now, because these fractions now all share the same denominator, I can then just cancel them all off. And I'm left with x, x plus 3, plus 5, x plus 2, equals one lot of x plus 2, x plus Plus three. When there's a 1, there's no need to write it down because it's just 1 times, which won't change the actual brackets. Now the next step then is to actually expand all the brackets. Now x times x plus 3 will be x squared plus 3x, plus 5 times x, 5x, 5, 5 times 2, 10. So I expand both of these brackets separately. I then expand these brackets. x times x is x squared, 2x and 3x is 5x, 2 times 3 is 6. And then I've got, now I've got an equation to solve with all the fractions having basically vanished and all the brackets having also gone. Now, step one is to simplify where possible. Now, I observe how there's an x squared term on both sides. So they can cancel, and then 3x plus 5x is 8x. So 8x plus 10 equals 5x plus 6. The next step is to take away 5x from both sides. So 8x take 5x is 3x plus 10 equals 6. We're now almost there. I take 10 from both sides. 3x equals 6 take 10 is minus 4, so therefore x will equal minus 4 all over 3. And there we go.